Hey everybody, happy Friday. I'm back. I'm outside again. Uh, my kids are running around, house, around the house screaming. My dogs are out here with me. Um, and we are going to get into the Word of God today. Hopefully y'all have enjoyed y'all's week. Um, quick update, my, my kids are all fine. Um, everyone tested negative for COVID in our house, so we will be going to church on Sunday. Um, and so we're looking forward to seeing you guys there. Uh, we will try to keep our distance, I think. I'll try my best. I know the rest of my family will. Um, but uh, tonight we're going to be looking at Go for Jesus. And um, if you followed along through the week, you know, with Miss Laura and Brother Jim and, and Grant, it's kind of led up to uh, each person has kind of tackled something different. Miss Laura did an amazing job with uh, with what a disciple is. And, I mean, crazy. She, she gave so many scripture references, so many different uh, perspectives and insights, uh, little details that, that I learned something, you know. And so I'm thankful for that. Uh, then Brother Jim and Grant, uh, of course, they did their thing. Grant's kind of leads right into to mine, which is, uh, I guess, you kind of can't get here without what, what Grant talked about, which is uh, also what Miss Laura talked about. You can't, you're not making disciple of yourself. You're making a disciple of Jesus Christ. And you can't do that unless you've experienced Jesus one, but also um, if you're not progressing in your faith, if in your relationship with Jesus, it's going to be kind of hard to instruct and, and help people along that, that path. You're going to ultimately end up making people just like you. And ultimately, we don't need more people like you and me. We need more people like Jesus. And so that's our goal. That's our whole focus. And mine is uh, the, the go part, the go for Jesus. And and I, I want to look at a person in specific, uh, John. Uh, we're going to be in John chapter 21. We're going to look at two verses there, uh, verse 24 and 25. And then we're going to look at 1 John um, is, is the two places we're going to be. And, and so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start with prayer and then we'll kind of jump into our, our little thing that we got going on here. Okay, um, let's pray. Father, we love you. Uh, we trust you. We're so grateful for all the opportunities you give us, Lord, for, uh, for the knowledge you're willing to share with us through your word, through your Holy Spirit. Father, we are so blessed as a people. Lord, and I, I just pray that as we seek you, as we seek to understand you and, and know you better on a deeper level, Lord, that we naturally um, overflow with, uh, with joy and, and love towards other people so that they may know you as well, Lord. Um, put it in our hearts that, you know, that we are on a mission, Lord, that we are on a mission to, to not just serve you, but to, you've given us purpose. Lord, and, and I, I mean, I think we should take that very seriously, and, and I think that uh, your church needs a little bit of a wake-up call, Lord, and I don't know what that looks like, but ultimately, I trust you. We trust you as a church, Lord. We, we are willing to follow you, and I just pray that we could do the hard stuff, which is just do what your word tells us to do. Um, seems so simple, Father, but we are broken, Lord. We are a... Uh, we have a sinful nature. Uh, we are still human beings, Father. And though your spirit um, is is in me, is in us, Lord, that uh, I just pray that it could overcome um, our flesh and, and ultimately make us look more like you. Um, I pray that uh, when we get together Sunday and, and that we could rejoice and celebrate what you've done um, for us on the cross, Lord, but what you've done for us this week. Um, we love you so much. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so uh, the original, I guess, topic or, or kind of jumping off point for kind of everybody has been the same, the Great Commission and Matthew, um, go for go and make disciples of all nations, right? That's, that's the gist of it. Um, and again, the, the other ministers did an amazing job. We are going to look at a specific example of one of the disciples um, that followed or was with Jesus, but not only with him, but was one of his closest companions, one of his closest, actually the Bible says the, the one that, that he loved, right? The, the one that Jesus loved, um, and it's taught referring to John. Um, I guess one thing I'll point out uh, before we go any further is uh, I, I think at some point, you know, we all, uh, as a Christian, 
we all kind of realize um, what we need. We always talk about go and make disciples. We always talk about becoming more like Jesus. We always talk about what a disciple is and what it looks like. I think we've, we've kind of grown into this this series, I mean, this this book that we're going through has been amazing for me, and, and we're going into going on mission for Jesus. And I think, uh, realistically, if you look at yourself and reflect on who you are and, and how far you've come, uh, maybe you've grown a lot, and maybe you've grown a little. Maybe you keep getting to a certain point where you kind of plateau and you, you kind of fall off. Well, all of us are on this journey together. We None are perfect. We all look to Jesus as our Savior and Lord, and there's a reason for that because we are sinful people. And so no matter where you are in your journey, no matter where you are on your walk as a disciple of Jesus, um, it doesn't matter. Uh, all of us can learn from this stuff. Um, and, and I'm praying that all of us have learned from this and that it, it's not just some head knowledge that we get, but it's something that we could put into action in our daily lives right and, and so that's the goal as far as a disciple is, is putting this stuff into action um, and, and so uh, going and making disciples is, is literally acting on the things that Jesus taught these these disciples that shared them with the whole world right um, let's look at uh, John chapter 21 verse 24 and 25 uh, before we jump over to uh, to uh, first John um, and I got it marked in my Bible with my phone. I don't have a pen on me. Um, so, yeah, so just bear with me. Um, verse 24 says, This disciple is the one who testifies to these events and has recorded them here. And we know that this account of these things is accurate. So John, the one who wrote this gospel, is testifying clearly that these events has been recorded, or he's recording them in this book, and he knows for a fact that this account of these things is accurate. It's true to the best of his knowledge, to the experience that he's... Uh, these men aren't just a story in a book, right? Uh, we get so caught up in the stories and and what's going on. We, I mean, these men lived and breathed. They ate food. They they picked grapes and figs. They they herded. So they fished. They, they did so many different things. They woke up. They told jokes. They told stories. Uh, they loved... All those things, they're real live people. And so he's testifying that the things that he put down here, the emotion, the feelings, the all the things that goes into this book um, is true and accurate to the best of his ability. Jesus also did many other things. If they were all written down, I suppose the whole world could not contain the books that would be written. And so John is just saying there's so much more to Jesus than than what he's written down these are kind of the bullet points these are the highlights um these are the most memorable things that that stands out to him but john is clearly testifying here that there's so much more to jesus and i hope as a disciple there's so much more to jesus than just going to church there's so much more than jesus than just praying or reading your word it's it's something that's real and alive and that makes you come alive right the spirit of god may it come out of us in such a way that it's it's more than just a bible it's more than just a church building it's more than just a disciple of jesus christ but there's something real about this and there's a train i'm outside again remember so so i, I thought that was a pretty cool thing that like first if you're gonna go for jesus you have to experience him you have to get on a per that like how many times do we see people and we want to approach them but for some reason we're insecure maybe about who we are maybe we don't know enough maybe this or that so so what's holding us back what held these men back the the disciples what held them back they knew jesus they experienced them they he was real they seen they witnessed the the resurrection they seen john firsthand was at the cross when jesus spoke to him and said this is your mother you know, take care of her um, as he was dying. You know, these are some of Jesus's last words when he was on the cross spoken to this man. And so there's something more than just a church building people. They, I mean, in order to go out there and accomplish some of the things that the greats accomplished, the, the Billy Grahams, the, the Pauls, the all these other people, um, in order to kind of get going on that in order to be able to execute on these things 
or on your gifts and talents, um, you have to be, you have to have experienced Jesus on some kind of personal level. And he, and, and on a consistent basis, not just a once in a lifetime thing. Um, and so a lot of us take this commission and we just say, okay, let's go do it. Right. But we, we forget the steps that went before this, this mission, right. To know Jesus, to experience him. And, and these men, these, these disciples that we read about, these epistles, the, uh, Paul's account, all these other things, uh, that we look at, it, it wasn't just this one night they blinked their eyes and next thing you know, here I am ready to stare death in the face for my Lord and Savior. It, I mean, if it's not real to you, if it's not legit and not tangible in your life, um, you, you got to figure it out, you know, because it's, it's kind of hard to execute on a mission if you don't believe um, in the mission in the first place, if you don't have the faith to execute what you say you believe. And a lot of us are fat and happy um, just sitting on the couch um, doing, drinking sweet tea, eating chicken, and, and just kind of casually here and there throwing Jesus around like we did something. You know, um, let's read uh, 1 John chapter 1. Um, I got a couple verses here. I don't want to look at it. I'm just going to start reading. Um, it's the first three or four verses. We proclaim, and this is John again, uh, we proclaim to you the, the one who existed from the beginning, and it sounds familiar because it's the way he started uh, the, the Gospel of John, um, who existed from the beginning whom we have heard and seen, we saw him with our own eyes and touched him with our own hands. He is the, is the word of life. This one who is life itself has revealed to us, and we have seen him. And now we testify and proclaim to you that he is the one who is eternal life. He was with the Father, and then he was revealed to us. We proclaim to you what we ourselves have actually seen and heard, so that you may have fellowship with us, and our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that you may fully share our joy. And, and so John is, I mean, this is a hard time. Right. When when these writers are writing this stuff, the, the Christianity was not so popular. And, and John, you can feel you could see the emotion that's coming out of him. You know, he's testifying. We touched his hands. We seen we looked into his eyes. He he fed us food. He I mean, we sat at the table. We, I mean, I have made mistakes. John has sent his mother to say, hey, put me on your right and my brother on your left, you know, put me, put us in positions of power. They had it wrong and they went out and they are crying out for people to come to Jesus, not because of who they are, uh, but because of who their Christ is and how passionately, how emotionally, how real uh, Jesus is to them, right? And so I, I just want to say um, overall, before my time runs out, if we're ever going to get into the mission, if we're ever going to get involved and go for Jesus, if we're ever going to do that, this stuff has to be so real to us that we're willing to um, be persecuted for it, be, I mean, to the point of, of death, right? And, and I hate to sound so like uh, prehistoric uh, because it's not something that's... Uh, really that we have to face at this point yet maybe it will be at some point but right now there are is zero consequences for following Jesus in America and I, I think the reason that is is because we are so casual with our Christ um, and, and I think it's from a lack of, of knowing him the way John knew him the way the the Peter and Paul knew him and and also the uh, the nonchalant attitude of, you know, Jesus died on a cross for me, so I'm good. You know, we, we, Jesus went all the way for us, right? He went all the way. And if you believe that, if there's any kind of heart in your body for Jesus, that you should feel that when sin comes your way. I mean, that's called repentance. That's called, um, what is it called? Uh, conviction, right? When when God just does something in your life that he is so amazing that he accomplished what he accomplished, but then it should also turn into this fire that 
if you truly have faith, right, faith, the key word, if you believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ is who he said he is, that he died for your sin, that you are saved, that you are a true Christian, and, and he's worth showing up to church for, he should be worth reading your Bible for, he should be worth praying to, but more than that, he should be worth um, your family and your friends and, and the people around you that you experience. Um, he should be worth going for, and, and going is not necessarily um, taking your Bible and walking them through scriptures. It's it's not. It's showing Jesus exactly what Miss Laura talked about and Jim and Grant. Exactly the same thing. It's not something that you say. It's something that you do. It's a life you live. It's that love, that transforming love that goes from Jesus to us, to other people. And we have to be patient and kind and and all the fruits of the spirit we we got to get there by walking with jesus and and it's amazing when you look at the gospels when you read the four gospels matthew mark luke and john and you you see these men these flawed human beings just like us and and then you flip over to acts and and to first john and to james and to to peter's epistles to and, and then look into the history of, of what these men experienced, the, the circumstances surrounding these speeches, these talks that they gave, these, uh, these sermons, and how they changed the world only because of their heart change uh, and, and ultimately because of who Jesus was and, and, and how committed, how faithful, how true and, and passionate they were for that same Christ that overflowed. Um, and, and John says it. Um, at the end in verse 4 he says we are writing these things so that you may fully share our joy so no matter what's going on around them no matter if they're losing their job or, or people are dying around them because of claiming Jesus no matter what they are um, so that you so that other people may know the joy that we have in Jesus Christ um, and, and so that's what going for Jesus to me looks like it's it's not something we say it's something we do and it's a process that we uh embark on uh when we truly uh take our faith right pick up our cross and, and get ready to to go to battle and, and so i guess that's it for me um i love you guys and obviously i have so much more to say on this like usual but i, I have to wrap it up because i went almost 18 minutes um so I love you guys. I look forward to seeing y'all Sunday. And um, yeah, have a good weekend. All right, bye.